All right, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt here, and I am joined by a special, amazing guest, a new friend, Pastor Amon Chuku from Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina. That's right. Thank you and, so much uh, for having me on your show. Man, we are, I'm just so proud to be here with you. I'm, I'm really thankful you made time. We're here yes. in Phoenix at the uh, Turning Point USA event, and uh, man, we had a breakout session this morning to talk about church and culture. Yes. And, um, how in many ways the church is is allowing the culture to lead the way when it should be the reverse. Right, right. Um, I want to talk to you about this current climate that we're in. We're past the midterms. Mm. Brutal. Of course, yes. North Carolina, you live in a very uh, purple yes. state. Yes, yes. You would say. And um, how has this season been, we'll start with this, for you as a pastor navigating in your church, in your community? Right. Well, the reality is this, man. God's truth still marches on. Amen. Right? The Bible is more current than tomorrow's newspaper. Yeah, come on. And so we got to keep the gospel. We have to keep God's truth. Amen. All 66 books yeah. in front of God's people. Amen. But there are many preachers today, in particular men like Raphael Warnock. Right. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Right. He speaks lies in hypocrisy, and that's what Paul yeah. talked about. Right. Those who will have consciences seared with a hot iron. Right. Those who become a reprobate because they hide the truth from people. Right. Who would have ever thought that we would be in a day that a black man could run for office in Georgia knowing the plight of black America, knowing that there is a proverbial death rattle in the land, yeah. Yeah. Death rattle sets in when it's 23 hours uh, away from a person dying. Right. Something sets in called, called death rattle. Yeah. It means that that person is getting ready to transition. Black America is on life support. Right. In 1950, the fertility rate in the black community was about 3.6. Yeah. By 1975, that number went down to 2.3. Wow. In order to sustain a population over 25 years, right. you need to have a 2.1% rate for a fertility rate. Right. Black America today is around 1.7. Yeah. We are a dying population. It's like irreversible decline. It is. Yeah. It is. And so when you look at that, why would uh, Warnock run in support of abortion. Does he not know what he's doing to his own people? Right, right. You know, I believe that he's the kind of Negro that Margaret Sanger loved. Right. The yeah. kind that would be willing to sell their community down a river. Right. And as a black pastor, as a black leader, as a black husband, as a black father, I have a role to speak up and to right. speak out. Yeah. And I get bludgeoned all the time. There are yeah. people upset with me right now based upon some points that I made last night. Yeah. I said something, I'm going to double down. I'm not going to apologize yeah. and back away from it. I yeah. said that blacks have become the cheap prostitutes of the Democratic Party. Wow. They screw us and barely pay us, and we keep coming back right. for more. Yeah. What did I mean by that? I mean that we have been on the plantation of the left for a long time, yeah. since 1968. No Republican president has received more than 13% of the black vote. That's over 50 years. Yeah. What have we gained as right. a result right. of being shackled to the right. left? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. The, fatherless the fatherlessness rate is, a, is at an all-time high yeah. in the black community. Right. But on the left, they want to talk about white supremacy and right. the white right. man and right. the KKK right. and right. critical race theory. The, yeah. the greatest issue ailing the black community is not the white man it's fatherlessness right it's what we're doing yeah. to our own posterity right. and our own seed and that message needs to get out so i'm thankful for this opportunity yeah. to share with your with your uh, vast audience yeah so ha as a as a pastor how do you navigate this and one of the things i find interesting is like freedom has always come from the pulpit uh <laughs> In American history, like, right. I mean, the, 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 the revolution started sure. in the pulpits sure. and, you know, uh, you have, uh, you know, the end of, uh, of slavery came from the pulpits. Yes. And then you have, you know, the, the reversal of Roe v. Wade, which yes. started in prayer meetings. And I, I did this when I was in 
high school. You know, yes, I, yes. I, I've been praying and believing, and so so we have an incredible history of mm -hmm. the church actually shifting things. Why is it now all of a sudden these biblical values, these things that haven't been questioned for thousands of years, why are they all of a sudden viewed as political for pastors? Well, it's because many pastors today are more beholden to the planks in the Democratic Party platform than they are the cross beams of Calvary. Yeah. They have relinquished the cross and they're holding to the yeah. donkey. Right. They're holding to the world. Right. They're holding to syncretism. Right. They're mixing the holy with yeah. the profane. Right. So therefore, the gospel has become watered down. Right. And it was once said that if there is a mist in the pulpit, then there will be a fog in the pew. Wow. If the pulpit yeah. is it clear right. on what this says, right. then what do you think the sheep are going to do? Yeah. I found out today that many of the sheep are more con courageous than the shepherd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so what we need more than anything is boldness. Yeah. And that's something that is spoken of in Acts chapter 4, verse 29. It says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that right. with all boldness they may right. speak thy word. Boldness translated in the Greek is the word parhesia. It means the unreservedness of utterance. Right. It means to say all and to tell all. It also means freedom of speech. Right. Now, so when you exude boldness, you represent freedom of speech. Right. We have this as an amendment right, right, the first right, right? Yeah. We also have this as God's people, those who have been um, blood bought and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We have freedom of speech. We have right. boldness through the spirit. But today, many preachers aren't bold. Yeah. We have wimpy watchmen. Right. Right. right? And we, we've been called <coughs> to be watchmen and watchmen are called to do more than just watch. Right. They're called to speak. Yeah. They're called to be bold. Yeah. You know, the, the Old Testament talks about blind dogs that won't even bark. Right. What good is a dog who sees a threat coming in through the back door right. and the dog doesn't even bark? Right. and alarm its owner. We have right. preachers who see the enemy that has come right. into the front lines yeah. of the church and the pastors won't say yeah. anything about or it. Or even worse, they're they're propagating, not only are they not stopping, but they're propagating, we saw this with Warnock in Georgia. Yes. You know, um, the, the amount of videos of pastors promoting. <laughs> come on, man. Promoting prophesying yes. him into office, yes. telling their congregation he was going to be the one to, yeah. you know, I mean, it just, you got to get to a whole nother level. Like I could understand it saying, I can't actually understand it, but there are <laughs> some pastors that are like, I'm just not going to mess with it. You know, you vote how you, and that's the, why we are in the place we are in America. But it takes another level of delusion and demonic in many ways filled with demonic stuff yes. to propagate yes. somebody that says, I'm a pro-choice pastor. I mean, we're right. actually at a place in America where somebody like that can right. get church buy-in. Right, right. And sadly, an overwhelming amount of black supporters have bought into right. that narrative. I'm disgusted by it. Yeah. I'm upset. I'm filled with righteous indignation. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going on tour in 2023 to talk about Erased, which is which is the title of my new book, which was released uh, about seven weeks ago through oh, Salem awesome. Media. Yeah. Uh, Salem Books, rather. Um, Erased, Uncovering the Lives of Critical Race Theory and yeah. Abortion. That was the focus of the wow. book. And so the message must get out. You know, Raphael Warnock and your Jamal Bryant's and right. your, your right. William Murphy's and your Creflo Dollars, all of these noteworthy black men right. yeah. who have large pulpits yeah. and they have um, uh, thousands of subscribers on YouTube and yeah. on Instagram yeah. and on yeah. Facebook. What are they saying to black people? Nothing that's going to right. impact them as yeah. it relates to their posterity. Yeah. The blood is on their hands. Yeah. Right? And God yeah. is going to hold them accountable for their failure right. to speak right. up yeah. for, for those who have been caught in the ditch. And we need and we need those 
John the Baptist, Elijah anointed people to prepare the way <laughs> and to, to cut, you know, yes, like yes. What, what God's called you to do. Sure. Um, I, I feel like what kind of blows my mind, though, is that it's like there's an entire population, a group of people. And I see this a lot, you know, as a worship leader. There's a lot of friends of mine. They... We were praying for the reversal of Roe v. Wade. We right. were praying for these things. We, I know their history with God. I know their history with me. But the moment they start getting a platform that's bigger, the the less that's right. they want to mess with things. But actually, <laughs> that's when you do speak. That's right. I mean, God entrusts those people to a platform. Yes. In order, and, and people are looking. Right. You know, and, right. and why do you feel like it, so many of these people succumb yeah. to culture? Well, that, that scripture, Paul talked about the last days that there will be a falling away. Right. Where people will stand aloof from the right. truth. Yeah. You know, many of the sermons that you hear today are two minutes of scripture and 30 to 40 minutes of personality. Right, right, But right. my personality does not convert the soul. Exactly. Only yeah. God's word that's yeah. sharper than any two-edged sword right. really gets to the heart of yeah. where mankind is. Yeah. And so there are many who are pushing their movement. They're pushing their agenda. Right. Everything is about self-help. Right. You know, people want to date, want, want to be uh, a motivational speaker. Right. And a life, life coach. coach. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being a motivational speaker. Right. There's nothing wrong with being a life coach. Right. But when you need a mechanic, you go find a mechanic. Right. When you need a doctor, you go find a doctor. Right. When you need a lawyer, you go find a lawyer. And when you need a preacher, yeah, come you on. go find a preacher. Right. But what are the preachers saying? They have become quiet and silent because they are sitting in the seat of neutrality. Right. And that is something that is damaging the church. And right. we need to, across the board, bring revival. Yeah. But revival can't come until repentance comes. Right. Revival, yeah. Yeah. void of yeah. repentance, leads to apostasy. Right. And we see that today. There are many who claim to know the truth, to right. follow the way, Christianity, but they haven't been brought to repentance. So they're shepherding our congregations and leading flock in the wrong direction. Right. Leading God's people in the wrong direction. Yeah. So what do we need? We need to be broken. Yeah. We need to be brought to our knees. In the South, they call it, we need to go back to Kneebone College right. and Prayer University. Right. <laughs> we need to get back to the place where our hearts bleed and are broken yeah. for that which God is sensitive towards. Yeah. You know, we serve a God, a God of love. Everyone talks about that. He's a God of love, right? But love doesn't equal God. Right. We serve a God of judgment and justice, biblical justice at that. Right. Not yeah. this woke, frail, flimsy right. justice, right. Right. but right. the biblical justice. Yeah. We serve a God that wants righteousness yeah. and he imputed righteousness into us. Right. And we should carry that baton forward. Right. But we need revival and repentance and what you're doing in 23 and 24, calling America to revival, yeah. calling America to the capitals all around this country. Yeah. Man, that is going to shape and shift the climate yeah. in America. Now I look forward to being a part of that. Oh man, I can't wait for, for you to be a part of that, and especially <laughs> because you're in Raleigh, that's yes. where we're coming through. Yes. And I really have a heart to see these blue cities, purple states, yes. Uh, places and, and, and why I like, I love that you're in North Carolina because it's always a contested, heavily fought after state and it always matters in elections. Right. And it's always one of those places like Pennsylvania, yeah. you know, Arizona, other places that really matter. Right. And I believe it's a place too where God's flipping the script, <laughs> you yes, know, yes. Um, how do you and, you know, as we talk about m most of these capital cities, by the way, are blue. Sure, most sure. of them are completely totally leftist liberals right um and yet we could just base our ministry off of going around texas or florida <laughs> right that would be easy Man, so we would have huge crowds right. it would be awesome we right. would be preaching the same message the same people however that's not the gospel right mm -hmm. going to all the world and i personally am attracted 
to difficult, dark places. I've been doing it in missions for years. And when the pandemic broke out, that's where we went. Seattle, Portland, wow. LA, Chicago, mm. New York. Mm. How do you as a pastor in a blue city, in a state that's very contentious being fought after, how do you navigate right. these times that we're in with your church? How do you not get hopeless? Mm. How do you not get discouraged? How do you rise up in faith but carry optimism? Well, you know, God's truth endures to all generations. Right. We don't have to rewrite the script. Right. Right. Some may flip the script. Right. But we have to stick to the script. Right. Come on. This is the script. This, yeah. and, uh, and the lack of better words, ain't changing. Right. We need to hold to yeah. God's truth. Yeah. That's what America needs. That's yeah. what these blue states need. They need more of God's word. Mm -hmm. And I say this to those who are out there, you know, to a person who doesn't know Christ as their personal savior, this life appears to be a horror story. Yeah. It's nothing but doom yeah. and gloom. Right. But to those of us who are born again, yeah. this isn't a horror story. This is yeah. a drama. Yeah. Because we have read the end of the book. Right. Amen. And we read where it said that we have overcome yeah. Satan yeah. by the blood of the Lamb and by the yeah. word of our testimony. Right. Testimonies are meant to be shared. Yeah. We must share the testimony of the triumph that we have in Christ Jesus. Yeah. We are not fighting for victory. Right. We already have it. Right. Amen. We're not fighting yeah. for dominion. Yeah. We already have it. Right. We just need to present ourselves to the battle and proclaim God's word and we will see that mankind's heart will be changed. Amen. No, I love that. I, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, running in conservative spaces and doing I feel like there can kind of be this tendency uh, for kind of this mentality to, you know, let's let's run to the bunker, <laughs> let's get our ARs and right. hide out in the bunker, and, sure. and, and you know, and let's all move to Texas or all move to Florida or all right. let's go where it's easy, let's go where, you know, we love our governor, let's go where, but but but, you know, throughout the gospel and throughout revival history, you see the church thriving when it right. goes into places. Right. That are difficult and sure, hard, sure. and 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 that's our commit. That's what the Great Commission is all about. Of course. Now, what I think also is necessary is, and this is why I say this frequently in city after city after city, we got to make a war on grumpy Christianity. Because yes, <laughs> we are fighting for the values. We're right. we're we're not afraid to stand up and speak against people like Warnock or sure, whoever. Sure, sure. How do we carry joy? Like, how do you carry joy? Because this right. is what is, what I noticed traveling across America. They've seen the angry political thing. Sure, sure. Right? And especially you go to the, you know, the, the far leftist communities, they're the most angry. Right. That, they don't know what to do when a joyful believer shows up. Right, right. And when I look, I mean, it's Christmas time, and I look at Isaiah chapter 9, which says that Isaiah is prophesying the coming of Jesus, and he says, this is how you're going to know it's him. Right. He's going to carry joy. And it's right. actually four times joy in, sure. in Isaiah 9. They will rejoice before you as women rejoice before. That you'll, you'll recognize right. him because right. he's carrying joy. How do we encourage believers mm. that, yes, we're fighting for all the things that matter, and we have a tendency to, you know, get intense. We can call people out, and we should. Sure. How do we carry the joy, though? How do we keep that? Right. Well, the thing is, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. We find our true place, our fullness in joy. You know, you can't be a frowning, um, destitute, a person who's in Lodabar, trying to win people to Christ, and you don't have passion. Right. It's almost like that new convert, right? Right. A new convert will win the most souls. Yeah, Why? Yeah. Because they are happy. They got the glow. <laughs> they got. They have the glow. They got and the glow. They may not know much about the scriptures. They can't yeah. quote verse after verse yeah. after verse. <clears throat> All that they know is that this man named Jesus yeah. touched me. Yeah. Right. He yeah. he he transformed my life, and now I need to go tell someone. Right. And so we have to keep that joy, but that joy comes in from being plugged in right. to the scriptures, to fasting and prayer and praying. Because at the end of the day, many of us who go through many battles, 
You've gone through countless mm -hmm. battles for the cause of Christ. Yeah. It's easy for your uh, bright flame to become now a flicker. Right. That's easy. Yeah. The same thing for me, working at abortion clinics, trying to save babies for the right. past right. 10 years. Wow. It's easy for yeah. your flame to go right. out. But right. the thing that keeps us emboldened yeah. is heaven for yeah. me. Yeah. I think about the fact that when I leave this place, I'm going to receive an eternal reward. Right. I'll be with Christ, my maker, my creator. Yeah. That there is a crown that he has prepared for me. There's a robe that he's already custom tailor fitted for a six foot four <laughs> man. You know, I look forward to that. So that keeps me inspired because at the right. end of the day, while I'm standing, I know that I'm working towards right. something in eternity. What is your, what is your, either the prophetic word or the promise or the, like what keeps you motivated and hopeful with the black community and what you see God doing? Obviously we know all these issues. Mm. What do you, is there anything that you can point to or maybe a word that you got or maybe something that keeps you going? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, God is long suffering yeah. to everyone. Yeah. Not willing that any should perish, should perish right. but that all should come right. to repentance. Right. Long suffering represents a candle. Yeah. That has a wick, of course, yeah. and that wick gives off a light, light for right. maybe 12 hours, 24 right. hours, 36 yeah. hours. But at a certain point, that candle's wick will go out. Yeah. I believe that God is going to extend the time for the black, for black America mm -hmm. to see his light yeah. and for their wick to not be blown out. Because, you yeah. know, when a candle's wick goes out, there's nothing that you can do yeah. to get it to, to become <laughs> relit. Right. I think that this is the finest um, time, not only for America, but for black America. Right. It's dark in the world. Right. We know the issues. Yeah. We know the plight of the black community. We know the, the fatherlessness rates. We know right. the rates of right. abortion. Mm -hmm. right. We know all of these things, but there is still a God right. in Israel. There is still a God who loves this country. There is still bomb in yeah. Gilead, yeah. right? And so we hold to that, and I push that message across this nation, and I believe that what's going to take place in 23 and 24 will bring revival yeah. to America, but also yeah. to, black, to black America as well. Well, and I, I would say, you know, one of the things I like to, as a point of hope, I want to share a point of hope and then a testimony regarding that. There's a reason why the enemy mm. relentlessly targets and harasses the black community yes, yes. is because they are destined to be deliverers. Yes, yes, yes. And I mean, there's nothing like, I mean, I, I even feel the anointing on you. Like mm. when, when the enemy hates that, right. and he targets, like he doesn't make counterfeit $1 bills. <laughs> That's right. He makes counterfeit hundreds, you know, yes. and, he, and he, there's an attack right. because there's a resistance Yes. because there's such gold and there's mm. such potential Yes, yes. for kingdom breakthrough to come out of that community. And right. I remember, um, so in, in 2020, all the racial stuff was going on and right. we were going to these cities where, you know, it was, that was the hot thing, you know, it was like, and of course I was being called every name in the book, white supremacists, all this stuff. And I'm yeah. like, I've been a missionary for 15 years. I've, <laughs> I've gone to 70 nations. I, I'm not even going to try. I don't even need to defend myself, right. like whatever. Right. But I told the Lord, I said, you know what? I'm not going to do the, you know, let me find a black guy to come with me to, to make it seem on the, I said, right. I'm not going to do that, Lord. I'm not going to do that. Sure. If, if, if you're going to have to move or do something. Right. Buddy calls me up, mm. Eddie James, gospel singer, calls oh. me up. He's like, man, the Lord spoke to me in a dream. He's like, I'm supposed to roll with you. And I'm, and I said, bro, I don't know if you want to do this. You don't know what you're stepping into. Like, it's crazy out here, you know? <laughs> and we were going into cities like after the, the, uh, Kenosha was sure, lit sure. on fire. Oh, yeah. We went to Elizabeth City after a shooting there. And it just wow. seemed like God was sending us to places after all these traumatic yeah. uh, issues. We were in uh, Minneapolis right. right after George Floyd, all this stuff. Right. I said, Eddie, I don't know if you want to step into this, bro. Like right. it's because it, he's deep in the gospel community, you know, sure. and I know he's a conservative. Right. I know that he loves 
Jesus is stands for the right things, but I just was like concerned about you're going to get some smoke. Oh, yes, yes. Anyway, he ends up coming with me. We do like 30, 40 cities together. Mm. Man, it was so powerful. Mm. The ministry was so dynamic, right? I mean, he brought his band. He did gospel stuff. I did what I can do, which is not gospel. I'm not, I'm not, not that talented to <laughs> yeah, play right. all that, but... But I do my thing. He did, but it was like it wasn't contrived. Right. It wasn't a plan that we tried to put together. It wasn't like let's let me find a black guy in the church and sure, throw him sure. on stage and let's have this fake. No, right. no. It was God ordained. Right. It was powerful. Mm. Every place that we went to, there was deliverance that happened. There was freedom that happened, and we experienced this, this, this breakthrough that came at a God ordained moment. And. Not only was it powerful for me, but for him, yes, for his yes. ministry. Oh yeah, blew up, grew, sure, you know, expanded. Right. And I started to realize, man, when God, when God does this, <laughs> like there's something special that takes place. What would be your encouragement to people? Um, you know, maybe they're like me. They're like, man, God, like I would love to like be intentional, but I don't want sure. to feel weird. I want it to be a God ordained thing. Because I do believe we need to see some historic unity. We do. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, like we, we got to, in the church, Right. we got to get together. Right. Well, you know, Dr. King was against white supremacy right. and black, black supremacy. supremacy. Yeah. But he was for God supremacy. Right. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a right. liar. Right. And so there are so many today who have made a false idol out of skin tone. Right. And because of that, it makes a true harmony amongst uh, ethnic backgrounds right. difficult. Yeah. And yes. so I, I hear you loud and clear because if you bring on the black guy, then he's the token right. and, trying and, to yeah. bring in other and people. And I put myself in that position. I yeah. wouldn't want that. But, but here's the thing. I, I've heard it all of my years, man. I've been standing for Christ as a college student right. playing Division One football at yeah. NC State University, yeah. winning souls. People labeled me and called me whatever. So I've right. done that for over 17 years. But here's the reality. It needs to be done. Right. And God will call his people to the front lines right. to get it done. Right. Right. And I believe that that's where God is calling me yeah. for such a time right. as this. We need to do it. Yeah. We must show the church how to push biblical unity. Right. That's the only way it's going to take place. And so the labels will always be right, there. Right, right, right. If you're not receiving a label, I question whether or yeah, not you're in you're the doing, faith. You're having an impact. Exactly. Yeah. Woe to the person who everyone speaks right. well of. Totally, totally. Right. And so I laid down my reputation. I can't be canceled because I laid down my reputation right. at the foot of yeah. the cross. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. took up Christ's image. Yeah. And so... There'll be some who may point out those things, but at the end of the day, we have to do the work of the Lord. God yeah. is calling for all nations right. to be united. Yeah. And I look forward to doing that in the new year. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love that. I, I think that there's a there's a, 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 a mantle that God has placed in this hour for yes. people to rise up sure. above all that. Oh, and yes. I think that, um, you know, I, I saw it even in California when, um, ah, when uh, what's his name ran against Newsom, mm. and they called him the uh, black face of white supremacy. Larry Elder. Like, yeah, Larry yeah, Elder. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, yeah. I mean, it was, but it got, it became so absurd. Right. Like it was so ridiculous right. and so absurd that it comes to a point where it's like, this, these attacks don't even have any juice right. anymore. Right. And I feel like we're almost to that place. We are. It's meant to silence the black preacher, the black right. leader, or the black politician. Right. It's a tool to shut us up. Right. But man, I'm, I can't shut up. Yeah. I'm more concerned with what God is going to do to me if I don't speak right. up yeah. versus what man yeah. can do to yeah. me. You can kill my body, but I'm concerned about the person who, right. who can send my soul to yeah. eternal damnation. Right. Right. I have to be a voice for black America. Right. Yeah. I have to be that mo that Moses right. that preaches deliverance to my yeah. people. I have to tell the left, let my people go. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Come on. That's something that God has called me to. Right. And so, man, we let everything else roll down, uh, roll down our back like water on, a, on the duck of a back. Yeah. On, on, on the back of a duck, rather. And so we push the truth because we know that there is hope there. And, man, I tell you what, 
I sense that this is a watershed moment. Yeah. I sense that God has something up his sleeve. Yeah. Right? And there's something that he wants to do yeah. in this 50 state tour yeah. that's going to yeah. be transformative. Right. I sense revival. Yeah. I on. feel it. Come on. We're, we are days away, away from God sending and breathing on the work that started at the height of racial tension. Blacks against whites, whites against blacks. The propaganda over the death of jo uh, George Floyd, yeah. right? Yeah. Exploiting that. You mentioned right, Elizabeth, right. Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Yeah. That's my hometown. That's wow. where I was born, right? Wow. And just, yeah. just to imagine all of the, the false narratives that have been pushed right. as a result of these shootings, as if these shootings take place every day. Right, right, they right. have been exploited. Totally. Right. The greatest thing impacting the black community is not the white man or the right. KKK. Right. That's not it. Right. There is revival right. that is coming. And I can't wait to be a part of it. Come on, man. I can't wait either. I'm, yeah. we're, we're so excited. I, I feel like it, it was always amazing, too, because when we would go to those states right. or those cities like Elizabeth sure. City, yes. the, the, the media loves to paint it as this great, you know, you know, like like this is d dividing America and dividing this city, and yet you get there, and it's just a bunch of broken people that exactly. don't want their they don't want their streets on fire. Right, that's right. And it doesn't matter what color, skin color you are. Like yes. they don't they want like Americans want safety. They want right. their businesses to thrive. Right. They they and they actually it's it's interesting. They're expecting the church. Mm. There is still an expectation <laughs> for the church to be the one. Yes. To help lead the way. Sure, sure. As a last take. Say something about your encouragement to, to church and, and, and to people out there, and let's right. pray for people. Hey, listen, I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in and watching this podcast, however you might view it. These are the finest days Come on. for the church. God is coming back from his, for his bride. Come on. I don't know if it's going to be Gabriel. I don't know if it's going to be <laughs> Michael. But one of these days, there's going to be a sound. There's going to be a blast of Come a on. trumpet. The Bible says that the dead in Christ shall be the first Amen. to rise. And we that are alive and remain shall be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're, ra we're waiting on the catching away. Come on. But in the meantime, we are called to occupy until the Lord comes. And what are we going to do? We're going to go to the front lines. We're going to go to city after city, state after state Come on. with the banner of the Lord, Come on. with our testimony, with the hope of the gospel, knowing that when God's truth shows up, transformation yes. takes place. I want to pray for you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, yeah, I yeah. sense through the power of the Holy Spirit that your anointing is upon us yes. for such a time as Come this. On. We pray for revival. Come now, Spirit of the living God, and rest and fall fresh upon us. We need your anointing. We can't move without the power of God. We don't want to move in the power of Sean. We don't want to move in the power of John. Yeah. But we want to move in the power of yeah. Jesus, Come on. of Jesus Christ. May the anointing of Come God on. be upon you as you listen and tune in. May you be filled with the Spirit of God. May you receive Christ as your personal Savior. May the anointing of God cover and keep you and be with you forever. Until we meet again, God bless you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank yes, you so yes, much, yes, brother. Yes, thank That's you, man. Awesome. Yes, sir.